Okay, before I start, I need to set some guidelines. I've yet to make it through the story without crying like a little girl. And so uh, I really don't want to do that in front of y'all. So if I kind of get choked up, would someone just start clapping? And then everybody will laugh, and then I'll kind of pull it together, and then we'll go on, okay? All right, so I don't know who wants to do it, but just, just do that. Um, growing up, uh, I was the, the um, son of a pastor, and uh, so I tell people I had a drug problem growing up. Every time the doors were open, I got drugged to church. You know, I was there Sunday morning, <laughs> Sunday night, Wednesday night, sometimes on Tuesdays, maybe on Saturday, whatever. But, um, but I grew up in the church, um, and so I uh, was saved as an eight-year-old. Um, went through high school, um, went to college. Now, my college experience is a little bit different. I, I, my first freshman year went, um, <laughs> <clears throat> did, <laughs> did not go uh, as planned. I was a, uh, I was a pre-med major, um, psychology, which that in and of itself is funny. But um, uh, that I did not do well. Um, my parents and I had a deal where I, I would get half of my school paid for, and uh, they, would get the, they would pay for the other half. And I had my half paid for with scholarships and loans and things like that. Problem was, they were all based upon a certain grade point average, which I did not achieve. And uh, so I came back home um, after the first semester, and my parents, who had kind of babied me my whole life, um, said, if you go back and you don't make the grades, we are not sending you back to Baylor. And I did not believe them. And they were serious. And so I went back to school. I think the first semester I made a two point, the second semester I made a 1.9. And... Uh, <clears throat> so came back home, and um, my parents said, okay, you're not going back to Baylor, and you need to figure out what you're going to do with your life. And I was like, well, I don't know what I want to do with my life. And, um, so anyway, uh, my, my dad is a pastor. He's probably the, the, um, the wisest uh, guy that I, I go to to counsel. That, um, uh, and so I, I just went to him. I said, I don't know what I want to do. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this, but what, what are you doing when you're the most happy? What, what brings you the most joy? And um, that was doing music or being at church. And um, so he said, well, you know, see if God wants you to maybe do that. So, um, I, so I began to um, teach. I taught three-year-old Sunday school. Which you ever, if you ever want to know if you want to work in a church, teach three-year-old Sunday school. And that will tell you very quickly. Um, but I loved it. And I also started uh, interning with our uh, music minister at the time. And I was in charge of the youth choirs. About, you know, back then the youth choir was kind of big. And so there's about 70 or 80 members in this youth choir. And we took a, a choir trip to Houston at the end of the summer. One of the nights that we were there, um, we went to a, all right, here comes one of those spots I was telling you about. Um, no, no, not yet, 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 not yet. Okay, so the last night, the last night of, uh, of that trip, we went to a home for, uh, for Down syndrome. And these were very severely um, Severe cases, people that, that aren't able to take care of themselves and aren't able to function in a, a normal uh, environment. And um, so we were singing that night, and during one of the songs, one of the girls got up, and uh, she came to the microphone, and she started singing with us. She couldn't speak very much English. Um, you know, you couldn't tell what she was talking about, but you could just tell that in her way, she was worshiping God. And at that moment, I said, that's what I want to do right there. I want to lead people to the kind of experience that she's having. And so I came back. I was so excited. I came, sat down with my dad, and I said, Dad, I think God wants me to go into the ministry. And his face was like as scared to death. <laughs> and I said, what's going on? He said, Jason, is there anything else that you can do and still carry out your calling? And those of you that are in ministry, you understand what I'm talking about here, because I didn't understand at the time why he was so you know, acting that way. I do understand now why he's acting that way, because it's a very difficult job, but I can see myself doing nothing else than working in a church. I also tell people, I was born to work in a church, because I just love it. I'm here when I'm having fun. I'm here. I mean, in my free time, like we come up here and like, see, what, what can we do? What can we hang out? Who can we hang out with? Or, um, so I love being in the church, and um, so I went back to school, changed my major to music, went through Baylor, Got a, uh, a, a music degree from Baylor in the church music department. Um, at that time, the only thing I knew how to do, the only thing I knew to do music is to be a music minister. You, you called the music, music ministry. Okay, so I thought music ministry, that's what I did. And as I began to, to get older and develop and look into um, the church world, I was like, well, 99% of your music ministers can sing, play the piano, and the guitar. I don't do any of those things. I was like, so this doesn't jive. I'm a drummer, you know. And so 
I, I began to wrestle with that, saying, you know, I, I think I was called, but I don't do, I don't have the skills that, that maybe m- music ministers have. And so graduated from college. When you call into the ministry, when you graduate college, you go to seminary. That's what you do. So I went to seminary. My dad went to Southwestern. So I followed him, go to Southwestern, and I began the church music department. Um, I showed up, and everybody was like singer, conductor, piano player, and I was like, okay, I'm drumming over here, and I don't know what you want me to do. And um, So that was the same time that I came here. I came to this church. Matter of fact, my first Sunday, remember the Sunday that David fell down the steps? That was my first Sunday. I was sitting right back there. And uh, so I was, he, he got up, and I was like, man, if, if a pastor can pull this off, then this is the church for me. And uh, so... <laughs> So anyway, so uh, I, I met Larry and um, was, was impressed by him. And, and I, I told Larry, I said, I'm here for three years while I'm in seminary. I want to learn as much from you as I possibly can. Pay me, don't pay me, I don't care. And so he said, okay, well, we have a volunteer job um, <laughs> in our media department. He said, what do you know about sound systems, video editing, things like that? And I said, I don't know anything. I, I might have been the most least qualified person to do media stuff at that point. And, um, so he said, well, we've got a guy that's going to train you, and, and um, why don't you just see what's, what's, what you think? And so I started doing it and just fell in love with doing media stuff because I, I, I understood that doing, running sound and, and the graphics and the videos and everything, that's just as much worship leading as the person on stage. If, if they don't do their job and if we don't do our job on the screens, then you guys don't get to worship. Just like if the worship leader up here doesn't get to do his job, then the worship doesn't happen. And so I thought to myself, 